use less. Your use becomes less. Never allow it to happen. Because when you become useless, you are less of use, you lose relevance. Are you following me? Even if you marry Bill Gates, who is one of the richest men in the world, huh? and, they, and there is nothing to buy somebody like that, find something to buy. I have someone in my life, uh, a family member, who is very, very comfortable. And when I was in my struggling days, there is, I, there is nothing you want to buy this person that you, what do you want to buy? He has everything in surplus. So I, I started doing this. I wanted to know what this, there was something people need that they are not buying for themselves. I noticed that his Bible is too old. So I took up for years up till now. I'm the one who buys him Bible. Every time I see that his Bible is getting old, I buy a new one. He has not bought Bible for more than 20 years. <laughs> now, at this level God has brought me, I give him money. Not that he needs it, but I know I have, I can give him some, I'll tell him it's for the church card. Huh? Don't say my uncle is rich. He doesn't need anything. And you are collecting, and you are collecting, and you are collecting. Very soon, you lose relevance and respect. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't say my husband is rich. My wife is rich. Find something to do. This is very important. Because marriage is run like a bank account. If you continue to withdraw, you are not making deposit. You to get to a point where nothing will be happening in that marriage again. So you don't wait for when you need to make withdrawal before you make deposit. Abby, what do you do to that bank account you want to make withdrawal from in the nearest future? Before the time you will need to make withdrawal, you're already doing what? You're already saving, you're already making deposit. It's not the day you need money. You now carry money there, you put it inside, you withdraw it out. I mean, it don't make much sense that way. Am I correct? You must have been making deposit. You're not waiting for that day to come. In fact, experts call what I'm talking about emotional bank account. They believe that every human being has emotional bank account with everybody in their lives. You have emotional bank account with your husband. You have emotional bank account with your wife. You have emotional bank account with your children. Many of us don't know we have emotional bank account with our children. Amen. That's why, you see, in parenting, we need to be careful how we parent. Because now you are the one in charge. Don't misuse your power as parents. Because very soon, they'll be the one in charge. They are the one that will tell you where you will live. <laughs> they are the one that will tell you that at the moment, you cannot wear that clothes. Go and wear the one I bought for you yesterday. And you, you, you will willingly go inside. No force. Because they are the one paying your bills at that time. Are you following what I'm saying? The hospital you will go to attend for medical checkup, they are the one that will decide which one. Although they may be nice to say, or, but majorly because they are the one that will pay for that bill, they decide. Am I correct? My mother is a very tough woman, very disciplinary, loving, uh, godly, very deep in God. I was shocked that we, we were still young then, uh, that was so many years ago, and we convinced her to leave a lorry to come to Lagos. People could not believe it. When they asked her, where are you going? She said, my children said, I, I, should, I should relocate. Ah, They look at her like your children. She said, yes, my children said I should relocate. Amen. She didn't even use her power. She used it to train us. Sometimes, people that are into child abuse don't know that when you over abuse a child, by the time that child is in control, it will deal with you. <laughs> Sorry I said it that way, but that's, that's the way it is, actually. Omar <laughs> Dick will learn nicely. <laughs> if, you are, if it's the father who does that, you'll be calling, he will not pick it. And later, you say, say, I'm busy. And there's nothing you can do. You can't bring out kid. Because at that time, it's already the bank manager or the CEO of so-so. What do you want to do? Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He will tell you, I am busy. I've told you you should not call me at that time before. <laughs> you, you, you won't say yes, sir, but inside you, you will say yes, sir. 
because they are the one in charge. So make sure when you are making deposit, you make the right deposits. Because you have emotional bank account with your children. Children, you have emotional bank account with your parents too. Because they've been taking care of you. When it's time for you to take care of them, you have to take care of them. You don't have any choice. God says, honor your father and your mother that you may be. That honor is not prostrating. No. That word honor there is the same word in Proverbs. The same word? Proverbs. Our ushers should work hard. Some people should not just sit anywhere. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? It got to a point. I'm sorry for that distraction. That person distracted me. It got to a point in my life that I understood very well that everybody counts in my life, including your housemaid, including your driver, including your cleaner. They may look less important, but they are important. If you read the story of Naaman, it was their housemaid who recommended Naaman to where he will find healing for his leprosy, as rich as he was and influential as he was. Your Baba is not as important. Every human being has a big price on their head. Jesus died for them. Am I correct? So be careful how you treat people. You don't, you don't wait for when you need to make withdrawal. Now, as a matter of fact, you make more deposit than you make what? How many of us run a bank account in this church? You have a bank account. Thank you. Do you make more withdrawal than deposit? No. <laughs> no. Actually, in this, our Nigerian banks, that they are removing our money, 15 naira, 20 naira. There is no how you can make the same withdrawal of the same deposit because you're paying bills, you are paying charges, COT, and all those things. Have it? So if you have been putting, if all the money you have been putting in your bank account since January till now is 20 million naira. If you go and check all the withdrawal you have made, it's not up to 20 million naira. Except if you take loan. So naturally, even in relationship, you cannot make the same withdrawal. I'm sorry, you cannot make withdrawal of the same deposit if you want that account to keep running. You have to have it at the back of your mind that in this relationship I'm going into, I'm going to give more than I'm going to take from. Do you get what I'm trying to explain? Don't go with the mind that, okay, I will give, I will give less, I will withdraw more. If you go that way, you, can be, you might be disappointed. Go with the mind, I'm going into this relationship to give what? More than I will what? Take. If husband and wife come together and they come with the same mindset, honestly, that marriage will be beautiful from beginning to the end. Because everybody wants to stay with someone who is relevant in their lives. Somebody who is useful in their lives. I pray for you. In the name that is above every name. You won't lose respect. Amen. You are not saying amen. amen. You will not lose relevance. Amen. In your family, in your relationship, in your marriage, you won't lose your honor. Amen. You won't lose your dignity. Amen. So I was talking about honor your father and your mother the other time. And I said the same word honor they use there. It's not, re it's not honor in terms of prostrating. You know. It is the same honor used in Proverbs. When the Bible says, Honor the Lord with your substance. So if you are honoring your parents, you are giving to your parents money, time, love, and so on and so forth. Respect. You know? So honor your father and your mother that may be well with you. The Bible is saying make enough deposit into the life of your parents. Are you following me? Be generous in... Look... Don't be a parasitic son, a parasitic daughter. You say, but pastor, I'm not working now. I'm only, I'm just a student. Even as a student, my relationship is give and take. Even as a student, find something to do. When you're on holiday, wash your mommy's clothes, wash your daddy's clothes, help them with laundry, help them with some cleaning, help them with some errand to do. Be useful. Contribute. Don't just be a collector. Be a contributor. Because the moment you are not contributing, you become useless, useless, use, less, less use. And when you become less use, 
you lose relevance and you lose respect. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So, if you don't want your relationship, your marriage to go red, what do you do? Huh? Make more deposits than you're making withdrawal. You want your husband to continue to respect you, continue to be more relevant in his life, make more deposits than you're withdrawing. And that's not just about money. Amen. Because now I'm sure there'll be an argument now. It's possible. That, okay, I'm giving more. I'm the one who spends more. You spend less. We're not just talking about money. Amen. Who goes for PTA? It's a deposit. If you go to any PTA, women are more there than men. I, I, so when, anytime, I, well, my wife too goes more than I go. Maybe in my own case, it's 60, 40. And the 40 I have attended, I've always noticed that it's all, in fact, 80% women. And I always ask, where are the men? You can't, you can't totally say those men are not good fathers. Because the reason why they are not there is because of the nature of their job, not because they are reading newspaper at home. Are you following me? So the person who is trying to make more money and provide more for the family may not be there enough. Like the person who is there enough and is bringing less finance into the marriage. Did you get the balance? But that doesn't mean that somebody is more important than somebody. Everybody is giving. Huh? Because money cannot attend PTA. Can your money wake up and go and attend PTA? And they say, where is Mr. and Mrs. So-so? When you say, we are, we are here to represent. No, you, they need a human being. And one human being has had to take our time to attend, Abby. So, and Madam should not think Oga is not important because he's not there physically. And that is not an excuse for Oga to not to once in a while find time to be there. One of the things I've come to realize is that make sure you are there for your children at every stage of their life. You know why? You know why? Children at that early stage, they don't appreciate money like they appreciate time. That's why even though you are the one paying their school fees, they love their mommy more than you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Because sometimes you can be angry. Ah, am I not the one paying, paying the bees and paying you? And every time, sweet mother, sweet mother. Because at certain age in the life of a child, the spelling of, the spelling of love is T-I-M-E. T -I -M -E. T-I-M-E is a spelling of love. That's why fathers, this is a call up, uh, uh, you see, what do you call it now? For fathers, I know you are busy. You cannot do 100% PTA like your wife. Please do 30% or 20%. Let there be a record that you are attending PTA once in a while. Snap picture every time you go. <laughs> Put it on record. Amen. Because you are making deposit into the life of those children. By the time they grow up, you may need to make withdrawal. Don't let them say you were never there. Don't be an absent father or a absent mother. Be there. I preached a message many years ago. I think I need to repeat that message. I preached that message almost 20 years ago. I say, is daddy and mommy at home? Is daddy and mommy at? Because in some places, in some cases, daddy and mommy may not even be at home. Both sometimes they're not at home. And the story of a family that used to touch me is a very, very rich family. Both of them were working in oil company. They were making a lot of money. And they were not there. They leave 5 a.m., come back very late. And the housemaid was the only one that gives them attention. Amen. I know the housemaid will be closed out in a way, but make sure you are there too. You see, no matter how tired I am sometimes, I'll come back home, I'll be so tired. I'll go upstairs and I'm tired. Something will remind me and say, Mr. Man, don't be too... I will go down and play small, even if it's 30 minutes. Don't be absent, 100%. So these people are not there. 
on, and these children began to learn bad things from the housemaid, from people, and they started watching pornography together, a boy and a girl, brothers and sister, brother and sister, and they started, they started having sex together until a teenager, the girl, got pregnant. They did not even know she's pregnant until pregnancy was five months. They did not, that's how much they were not available. It, the, the woman resigned the same day. Money is not everything. Because now they are going to be having a grandchild that they cannot explain who the father is. Praise God. So don't let don't let small things destroy everything. Do you, know how, do you know how much they have tampered with their own joy? Because every time they will see that child, you can't send that child away. Don't let the devil make you think that money is everything. There are times as parents you have to make sacrifice to say no to some open doors just to be there for your family. Are you following me? Hello? And if you're a pastor, I'm talking to both pastors and everybody. Pastors, in the name of doing ministry, don't be jumping everywhere because of honorarium. Amen? Jumping everywhere, every invitation because of honorarium. And you get trapped into the rat race that you are calculating in your head every day. By the time I join that, you have become a businessman. You're not a pastor again. Amen? Amen? I was in UK, I was in UK with my family for summer. And I told them we're going to be there to have a lovely time together. Deliberately, because I don't want invitation, I did not, the people I'm supposed to reach out to, I didn't reach out to them. I went inside, I came out. And I didn't reach out. And to be frank, if they reach out to me, I'll be, I'll be very blunt. This visit is not ministry visit. The only ministry I want to do inside it is the greet and meet and greet. This, you have to create that time. Invest deposit so you can make withdrawal. I pray for anyone who has not done it right. Receive grace to do it right. Amen. You'll be there for your spouse. You'll be there for your children. You'll be there for your parents. Every time they need you, you'll be there for them. Amen. You are not saying amen. amen. Attending their special days is part of being there for them. You'll be there for them. Amen. Every time you are needed most, you'll not be found wanting. I pray for any relationship, marriage that has been damaged because of poor depth, because of uh, poor management of the relationship. I command divine restoration. Yes. You are not saying amen properly. Yes. I decree divine restoration. Yes. A very wealthy man shared this story with me. How he was busy all throughout when his children were growing up. How he will leave the house very early, come back at 11 p.m. How he was not there for them. And when the children became teenagers, he said he just discovered that they don't enjoy his presence. How did he know? He said once in a while, when he's hearing them and their mom playing in the, in the sitting room downstairs, having so much fun, and he comes down to join them. He said the moment he gets there, two, five minutes after, he'll be the only one in the sitting room. They'll be leaving one by one. Because a strange person has just come in. They're not used to him. He said he started closing on time. So that he said he'll be hearing from the garage how they are shouting and screaming at them and playing. By the time he walks in and sits, I say, ah. he said, a few minutes later, he's the only one in the sitting room. He said he cried because he knew that. Eh? So, we, upon all these movies I have paid, upon all the investment I have paid, so these who don't even know me. So he began to deliberately, you have to be deliberate. Reach out to your children, as small as they may be, two, three, one. Reach out to them and begin to befriend them. Win their hearts, it's important. And I want to say, as I ran off, oh God, madam, invest into your marriage. Invest into what? Make deposit into your relationship. After one kid, two kids, stop staying apart. Stop avoiding each other's presence. Stop growing apart. Look, the garden you refuse to tender, the garden you refuse to take care of, with time, we, we take over the garden. Hallelujah. I have seen wife who says to me in counseling that their husband is just like a figurehead. To them, it's not their friend. 
when they even try to sit down, there's nothing to talk about. Because over the years, they've not developed friendship. Develop friendship in your marriage. I preach another message you need to look out for. Marry your friend or befriend whoever you marry. Huh? Marry your what? Because friendship is the glue of every marriage. Stand up on your feet. I'll continue in the second service. I'd like you to lift up your two hands and say, Lord, I receive grace. I receive wisdom. I will not be a parasite in my relationship. I will not be a collector. I will be a contributor. Open your mouth and ask God to say, Lord, I don't want to be a collector. I want to be a contributor. I don't want to lose my relevance in the life of my spouse or in the life of my children. Lord, help me to keep being relevant in their lives. Lord, help me to continue to be relevant in their lives. All the fathers and the mothers, they say, Lord, bless me so I can continue to be relevant to my spouse, to my children. All the singles pray the prayer. Say, Lord, help me to build a life that will be relevant to my future partner. Help me to build a life that will be relevant to my future partner. Help me to, 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 to enjoy giving in my relationship. Help me to enjoy, give me grace to enjoy giving in my relationship. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Women, can I talk to women a little bit? Because they have, they have accused me, they say I'm talking to men too much. Even if you are not the breadwinner of the family, don't lose relevance find a way to be a part of what is going on. Eh? Find a way to what? You bought, you bought matches when your husband was not in, around. You bought what? And you are telling him that you borrow him. Ordinary matches. And, you are, and he's refunding the money of matches. See how irrelevant you have become. Matches! You cannot buy Then you are saying, Moya and you. And he's refunding you. He's giving you. Now, somebody said, Pastor, I'm a housewife. Since I've been having children, I've not been able to work. Understandable, that's a season. Abby, that's a season. But please, with time, snap out of that season. If you're not making enough financial contribution, which you're not supposed to be with the same level with the man. Try and do certain things that makes you very relevant. When he's coming back from work, since your own work is 2 p.m., you close. When he's coming back from work, you hear the sound of his car or something. Be at the door to receive him. You may not be giving money enough there, but you are giving honor. You are giving what? Honor. Our parents, they did that. Our mothers, be there to receive him. Speak words. Ah, a kushe. That's what my mother used to do. Speak words to him. That will make encouraging. A kwataro, you know. When I got, look, this I don't want to share it publicly before, but let me just give you as a bonus. When I, when we just got married until now, my wife will even off my shoes and massage my, my feet. Who say, who doesn't like that? Because, to the glory of God, I do more financially than she does. And so, <laughs> but in terms of honor, she's even doing more than I am doing. So the equation is, and me too, when I start enjoying those kind of privileges, I, I start thinking of what me too I can do. <laughs> because me too, I have to do something. When you are receiving, you are also thinking of giving back to. So that that thing will not stop. Are you following me? Are you following me? So when your wife is pregnant, you're also helping her massage her back. Anytime she's complaining of back, you, you become a, a therapist. Yes. You know? <laughs> she comes home, she says she has a dick. You're helping her massage her neck. You know why? You are giving back too. 
Stop staying at the receiving end all the time. As if, you are, as if she's the only one in love. You, you are not in love. Show it back to the person showing it. Lift up your right hand and pray this prayer. This is the final prayer. Lord, make me a giver in my relationship. A giver. It may not be finance alone. Not just in terms of money. In terms of honor. In terms of love. In terms of everything. Make me a giver in my relationship. That one that is always giving. Lord, that's what I want to be. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray.